Is it harder or more costly to execute and lock in hedges when prices are high? Because theoretically, you'd want to do that. You'd want to lock it in when it's super high. And then if it goes down, I mean, you're you're flush with these higher prices, but it can't be that simple. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering, since I've never been involved in the mechanics of executing a, a hedging program. Sure. Yeah, well, there, there's a there's a lot to that, that question. Um, and so we may want to go in a couple of different directions. Um, but, and, and this is not going to be exactly right, but hedging costs very little, um, is, is the way I would, the, the way I would frame it up in the structures that we're generally talking to our customers about. Um, it's effectively free. I mean, every, every bank is going to get some, you know, some cents, right? Call it a couple of cents an M, you know, 20 cents a barrel. They're, they're going to get paid something for taking the risk. Um, but if you swap in, right, just do a swap on, on you know, crude oil or, or natural gas, you're just fixing the price you're, gonna, you're going to sell that, that at. Re regardless of where it is, there's always a forward curve. And so you're going to be doing something that's mirroring the curve. Now, right now, crude oil is backwardated, meaning future prices are lower than current prices, but the natural gas prices are in contango. So I can sell, you know, while gas is 230-ish in the front right now, you know, it's it's 425 if you start to look out into 25 and 26. So you can actually sell your gas in 2025 and 2026 over $4 an M right now. And that that's a really attractive, um, that's a really attractive option. But the out-of-pocket expense to execute a hedge, assuming you're staying in a costless collar or swap structure, is, is really nothing. Um, and so, you know, it's not any more expensive to hedge when prices are high than when 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 prices are low. Um, what you're really talking about is psychology, though. Um, you know, I, I, you know, gosh, who remembers all, a real long time ago, call it, you know, 24 months, uh, maybe 30 months where people were saying, gosh, if I could just get 275 gas and, you know, $55 crude, you know, Gas subsequently goes to nine dollars and change, and crude goes to one hundred and twenty. And people, you know, weren't weren't locking it in, you know, for the long term. And that created some real interesting, you know, um, some real interesting discussions, as you might imagine. Um, but we are all in this business because we're we're bulls, right? I mean, you wouldn't be in oil and gas if you weren't bullish the commodity price. Um, but we have to step back and say, anytime we find ourselves saying it's different this time. Um, we're wrong. <laughs> and, you know, having the discipline to always be taking risk off the table, you would have would have paid off very well um, for for any or any company ex with exposure to oil and gas prices, you know, as, as as they ramped up into the, you know, 120s for crude and nine dollars for gas. So it's, it's a it's a lesson, you know, nine dollar gas not coming back anytime soon. Um, you know, and could we see over a hundred dollar crude? Yeah, theoretically. The problem is, you know, we can all have our view on supply and demand um, in the market, and we all do. Um, but you know, who predicted COVID? You know, who predicted Biden would open up access to the SPR? You know, who predicted interest rates would rise this quickly, this fast? I think we all knew they were gonna, they had to go up, but I'm not sure anybody thought this this quickly, this fast. Who who had Russia invading Ukraine, and that that would actually be bearish prices? You know, it's like these things that we can't possibly predict. You know that that's where we all have to continue to step back and acknowledge we don't we don't know everything that's going to happen, and so we've got to be prudent in managing our businesses.